Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. All right. So today's session is literally on uh, financial abundance. <laughs> and, and what I wanted to talk about with this is that financial abundance is available for all of us. Absolutely uh, all of us. Yet what we code up that financial abundance will uh, will give us is actually the reason why we can't have it. And so the topic for today was freedom, choice, love, and authority. Your resistance to freedom or choice or more love or being an authority is actually blocking your ability to have money. Does that make sense? That, that, that's actually what it is. The money is there. The money's there. It is fun. There is so much. And I've got a little saying that there's as much money in the world as there are desires and problems multiplied by the amount of credit that's been created in the system. It's there. The, 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 it's completely, it's completely there. It's, it's available and it flows in a predictable and certain pattern. When, when, you, when, when it comes to money, there's two worlds of money. There's uh, creating or receiving money. And then there's using the money to, to grow itself you know, to, to, to grow. So there's not that much that you do with money. To, to create it, you add value to other people in a way that they would like to pay for that value. And then to grow it, you buy assets that other people will, will, um, will rent off you or use. It's all you do. It's like, these assets can increase in value. Someone can lease it off you. They can rent it off you or it can provide a service. So you're only doing a couple of things. You're, you're creating it and then you're buying things that, that, it, that it grows. It's a very, very simple thing. But the truth is, is, is many of us, uh, if you're like me, grew up in a, a working class or an employee mentality. And I, I didn't grow up in a negative one. I just grew up in that's the way it was. You know, I had family members that, you know, go to college and university, they study really hard, work hard, work hard, work hard, and, and working hard is what creates money. Did anyone else have that um, upbringing? That, that's what happened to me is that you work hard and you must deserve money. I learned smart people that get really high paying jobs, they deserve it. And, and I didn't really have any other upbringing. It was like, there was this idea that freedom and abundance was given to you after years and years and years and years of work and deserving, you then get to go and retire. You know, you get to have maybe one or two vacations. You see that? And that's what I was taught. I was taught that's how it is, you know, and the schooling system kind of coded that into us. My, my upbringing coded that. That's the way it was. And, and what happened to me is that I also had this other thing is that you, you shouldn't be greedy. You should only have, you know, what it is that you should have. You shouldn't have more. If you have more, uh, you, you know, you should give it away and, and you shouldn't be greedy. And there was, you know, the, the greedy was bad. You, I was, you, you felt guilty if you were greedy. You were, you were taught to share and, and, you know, not show off and to, you know, that, that was that was very, uh, very important thing. But then there's also very uh, confusing messages where uh, I would see people uh, give up stuff that they love to go and do something that they hate and then complain. But they would complain and say, well, I don't really want to do this, but I'm doing this because it puts food on the table or I'm doing this because I have to. It's just how it is. And it was very confusing because it very felt like uh, they were that they were a victim to this system or a victim to, to having to do it this way. And so it was very confusing so we have to complain about it. We've got to do things we don't love to get these things so then we can have what we love. And don't lose that because that costs me a lot of money. And you're naughty if you waste that. And make sure you finish your food because it costs money. But money's not that important. And it's just very confusing. And, and then it was also really, really important. Uh, you know, Chris, if you want to go on that basketball trip, you're going to have to go in and earn money. And if you don't go and earn the money, well, we can't afford for you to go. 
So you got to go and, you know, sell chocolates and knock on doors and have a, a newspaper run and you got to go sweep yards and you got to go do all these things. Because if you don't do these things that you don't want to do, you can't have the money to then do what you want to do. And so, so money became a thing that it was like, well, if we had that, we could do all these things. You know, we would go on a vacation or a holiday and, and you know, we'd like would like to do more of, of certain things, but we wouldn't be able to because that was, you know, that part was too expensive, you know, or, or hey, you know, th there, was a, there was a lot going on for me. And, and I think that we can all think back into how we were, you know, brought up and try to remember, understand, you know, what was going on for you. You know, for me, at, at, at school, if you had the, the coolest new Nike trainers, that was really, really, really cool. That was admirable to have that. But you shouldn't have too much of it. Otherwise, you're a show off, you know. And if you have really nice stuff, actually, other people might want to steal it from you. So you may better write your name on it. So I learned that if you have really nice stuff, people might want to steal it. In fact, um, you, you can be judged and shamed by others for having too much. You know, that you could have too much and you would do it to other people uh, and, and you, you would you'd be in a situation where there was just lots going on around this. You know, there were things that our family wanted to have. Well, we'd really like to have that car, but we can't because this money thing. So we've only got this one, but we would like that. And and, and, we, and I can't spend school holidays with you because I've got to work and don't complain because that's what puts money on the table. And and so I, I really coded up and, and I just wanted to reflect maybe what, what happened to you. But for me. Uh, money was all about to create freedom, create freedom. To me, it seemed that uh, money was a thing that was, uh, you know, stopping, stopping us having freedom to do what we love. It seemed like that was a, that was the thing that was in the way. You know, that was a thing that was in the way, but it was it's not important and you shouldn't spend it. And if you have too much of it, you should give it away, but we're going to focus our whole life on trying to get it and get really smart to have more of it and spend it to get this. And, and it was like this thing. And some studies have shown that, that where we position money in our mind is right next to family. So we code it up emotionally like a family member because we've, we've nearly attached that it's a giver of things. And then it's, it's also something that, that gives us food and gives us this. If we don't have it, we're in trouble, which is really interesting. And, and then I grew up and I you know, became an adult and, and banks started saying, here's credit. You know, here's a card. Here's this. You can just go. Yeah, you can pay it back later. Have this car. You can't even afford it. Have this. Have that. I was like, well, now I've got the stuff, and now, but now I've got to pay it off. This doesn't need, like. And there's so much to understand that you know, if I bought it on this, I'm paying 20 percent more, and the compound. It's crazy. And so I really, I really didn't understand how all of this worked. And what I was, what I focused on is I focused on, well, what is it that would really allow me to make make a lot of this? Because surely that's going to give me freedom. So I read a book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Who's read Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki? If you read that book, uh, I basically copied it right in the middle. He said, become a salesperson. He said, you know, learn, learn to sell something. Salespeople. And I was like, right. So I went and learned sales. And, and I became really obsessed with people and sales and those sort of things and learned to create it. And I learned to create lots. I had a water filter company, a solar panel company, created a lot. But I could never hold on to it. I'd figured out how to create a bunch of it, but I could never hold on to it. I didn't know the second half. And, and truthfully, I never actually allowed myself to have any freedom. Sure, I would make more. I would make more and I would just spend more and I'd keep working hard. There were times I had so much more than I could spend, but there I was still working every single day. And so I, even though I had changed some of the results with money, I still was having the exact same experience of life. And you see this a lot, you know, you, you see these musicians and, uh, and all of a sudden uh, they create a lot of wealth, but then they just start spending it. They create drug problems. They create um, sp bad spending habits they, they, and they, they blow it. And sports stars, you know, um, but, you know, like Mike Tyson and others who have just gone through so much money and they find a way back. They find a way back to the way it always was. And what's interesting in the United Kingdom, there's even a thing called Lotto Louts. They win the lottery and they, and they actually get themselves in more problems than when they started. So they, they win this big, they get this money. So they buy houses and they get all this stuff that then costs so much to maintain. They, they, and they, they, they just turn it, they just go bankrupt. They lose it all because they have no way to support it. They don't have the structures there for it. They just got given it. A, a lot of people that win the lottery end up worse off. Crazy. Isn't that crazy? they end up worse off because they don't understand, you know, that their, their subconscious wants to take them right back to the way it always was. And, and so 
I was only ever allowed to have an existence of chasing money. And that if I finally had it, um, the, the, the misguided idea that if I would have it, everything would be different. I was only allowed to chase it. I was only allowed to chase the freedom. I was only allowed to chase the choice. I wasn't able to receive it. Does that make sense? If I was chasing it, felt comfortable. You take it away from me and I can go chase it. That felt fine. I can go for it. But to actually have it, to actually arrive, that was scary. And the reason why it was scary is because my unconscious created a sense of belonging to be like my tribe, like my family. And my tribe and my family had been ones that were chasing and putting the power and having it at some day. We never got taught how to have it, how to actually be abundant. And so to actually be abundant, to actually have freedom, to actually have choice, to actually have authority over my day. That sounds really interesting, but I really struggled having authority over my day. Someone please tell me, when does school start? When does the bell ring? When have I got to be somewhere? Wait, I've got to choose my own day. And so the money was there, but it was everything else that I had to accept with it. And every, if I was to accept all those other things, I would also have to accept that I no longer belonged in that structure that was the safe structure of the way that I grew up. And so what's interesting is that our, our unconscious seeks this belonging and safety. It, say, it seeks belonging and safety. And the way that it seeks belonging and safety is by in early years going, okay, how is life? How do I make sure I belong with this family in this way? And what is the experience? Does that make sense? It's, it's what is the experience? Uh, Randall's just posted in here, 75% of people who have won lotto have lost it within three years. 95% of those people are worse off than when they won it by year five. 95% of people. I'm going to put that in my notes. Thanks, Randall. That's really great. Isn't that interesting? So your, your unconscious just seeks that belonging. And what it codes up is that what is safe is what we grew up with. That's safe. And the reason why they call it safe is that it's survivable. It's survivable. I can survive being someone chasing. I know how to survive that. And so it's binary. I can survive that. Everything else, I don't know if I can survive it. And so it's very interesting. It's very interesting uh, to realize that there's actually no way to, to create wealth and keep wealth unless you up-level your unconscious. There's two ways to do that. One is to have a significant emotional event that completely changes your outlook on life, like a near-death experience or something that is absolutely like shocking and changes all your coding that it's not safe to be broke anymore. Okay. Or... You can upfront do, do patterns uh, and, and things like we're going to talk about today so you don't have to wait for some absolute crazy tragedy or something really bad to come along and give you that upgrade. I, I've got a, a bit of a belief that either you do the work yourself or you're going to find a way to get into the work. And it's very traumatic to have to experience uh, shift the shift without, you know, as you walk through the world. It is much more enjoyable to, to create the revision of these beliefs here and, and to, to shift into it. And so it's not what money is because money is simply just a measurement. It's a measurement of, um, you know, of choice, of value. It's what you believe it's going to give you. That's the problem. Does that make sense? It's what you believe the world will be like if you had it that your unconscious can't accept. You see that? Because there's more than enough of it around. And so it's, you've got to always consider, well, if there's more of it enough around and I'm talented and smart and, and, I, you know, and I'm a capable person, surely I can figure this out. It's not a difficult thing, but it's, the, it's what would happen if I had it. So we're going to go through a, a really some, some great process today, but we're going to first really start to, to think about our relationship with this, um, you know, freedom and choice and authority and, and love and abundance and all of these things. So question that I have for you is, uh, what would you do if money was no problem at all? So 
if money was just no problem for you and uh, the only thing you can't do is give it away, you're not allowed, you had to say, I'm just going to give it away. So what would you do if money was no problem at all? So you, you just had it, how, how, would, how would that, uh, what, what would you do with life? So if, um, if right now something happened and it said, you know, you're going to get $10,000 a week in perpetuity coming into your bank account every week, half a million dollars a year. And, um, you know, that's after tax, that's clear money in your bank and you don't have to do anything else. Just, just what would you do with life then? So imagine that happened right now and I uh, said, so what would I do with life then? What would you do? Yeah, nice. And so if, if you were doing that, and some people are um, are actually just saying that they're going to pay off debt and buy houses and these things. Yeah, let's just say you've done all of that. I mean, you can only live in one house. You don't need it. You don't need to have the houses for money. So, yeah, you've paid off your debt. Come on, let's get over it. Like you paid off your debt. You you've got ten thousand bucks coming in every single week. You've, you're everything sorted. What would you do? You know, really. And, and you know what and then you think what would I actually do I wouldn't really buy more houses I wouldn't really I mean that's just there to then create more of this but I've already got more than enough so why would I do that I wouldn't do that yeah someone's like well I'd make more money why why would you you don't don't you have more than enough and maybe ten thousand a week's not enough maybe it's fifty thousand a week I don't know whatever that number is where you just money's no problem it's done and so it's very interesting to consider that and I want to ask you so if you were living that life, what would it feel like? What would be that experience? So if you're living that life, what would be that experience of that? How would that be? How would that be? It just really like, how would it be? You know, you just, you just do it. What would you be doing and how would it, how would it be? Yeah. How would that be? Hmm. Really, just how would it be? So it's all there, it's all done. How would it be just to have that? How would that actually be? What would the experience of having that be like? Hmm. Someone's typed in, wouldn't it be boring? Isn't that interesting that there's an aspect of us that, that would think that if we didn't have to make money, life would be boring. I could, you know, it's a very interesting thing. It's, I'm not judging. I'm just noticing that's very interesting. And then some of us want to, want to ignore it. We said, I'll do whatever I want, when I want, blah, blah, blah. But what is all of those things? Because that's just a vague statement. We're not feeling it. How would it actually feel if you were in that experience? Really, what would that be like? What would you focus on? How would you do it? And, and I just want you to notice how that compares to how life's normally been like for you over your life. Is that the same or different than how it's been? How is it different to now? It's very different for most of us, isn't it? Isn't it different? Let me know how different is it? Like if you were like that. And so I actually believe that the answer to that second question, how would feel, what would be the experience? I believe that's actually our true nature. And that most of us are knocking ourselves out of our true nature because of this, this uh, I need to get money. Who thinks that's an interesting premise? I don't think it's true, but uh, completely true. But it's a nice premise, isn't it? It's like when you tune into that, that's actually our true feeling. That's actually being a creative essence, isn't it? Isn't that this is a bit cheeky of me, wasn't it? <laughs> right? When we really feel and we go, well, this is what I'd be doing. This is how it is. So how is that different to now? So the difference between those two, how it would be and how it is now, the gap, that's the equivalent amount of resistance that your unconscious has. Because your unconscious is saying, this is what's safe. This is what's survivable. This is the way I am here. And then over here, this is where I want to be. This is how it would be. And the difference between those two, that force field between those two, 
is all the reasons why you're not allowed to have it because this is safe. And so what we need to do is take this feeling and bring it in, right? And, and experience it as it is now. So that is, it's quite fascinating to, to consider that. So I'd love to, to ask you is, well, what is money really then? See, see al although this session kind of seems to be focused on money, it, it's actually more about giving you freedom and choice and authority in your life to choose it the way you want. Does that make sense? So that's what it's really about because, because that's what we all believe it's going to give us. You see, it's, it's like letting your life, what your life will be like instead of letting the world, your friends, your family, your history your fears, your limits, or what you think really define you. And so this session isn't really about greed. It's not about fear. It, it's, it's not about any of that because greed is really based in the fear of not having enough, you know, coupled with some sort of imagination or imaginatory idea that, can envision all these different scenarios in which one wouldn't have enough and trying to preemptively uh, guard against all of those. It's, it's when you really truly know that you create your life, when you feel it all the way down to your bones, you won't need to have all the money in the world to feel choice and freedom and safe and happy. You won't need it. And then what happens when you really get into that structure, it shows up. Because it's no, you're no longer blocking freedom and choice and authority. You are it. Does it make sense? You are it. So you're not blocked by it because you already are greater than the result. You see? See, most people don't feel like they need to own all the oxygen in the world to be safe. True. We don't think we need all the oxygen in the world. We don't walk around with oxygen tanks in case there's not enough anymore. We breathe in what we need and it's there. And we trust when we go to take another breath that it's there again. True. You don't look at somebody else and go, look how much air they've got. You just, it's just there. I think there is a, as much oxygen in the world, as much hot air in the world, there is as infinitely more money opportunities. And so part of the trouble people have with money is that they assume there's some sort of limited supply. And I think those of us who have lived through, you know, the last few years realize that, you know, people can get credit for pretty much anything and the government will print a bunch of it so that it's there it's it is unlimited and it's a measurement um the way that we can measure value and it's 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 basically a creation i want you to get this money is just an idea it's an idea that we've made up and ideas are limitless in fact ideas are in the air and money's just an idea because all it is is it's a way that we are measuring uh exchanging value and so that we have a system to do it money is simply a measurement system it's basically just an idea so breathe that in friends because there's there's it's just it's just time for us to put down those old ideas that uh that, that we can't just have it all that you're allowed freedom and choice but you must be it to see it True. As soon as I let go of the idea that I, I would money would give me freedom and choice and happiness and everything else, and and that it was something I had to work hard and to get and all these things, and I realized that it's just a measurement and I'm above it all now, and I just need to create things that people want to pay for, and and and, and I did that. It flowed to me, no problem. And you know what? I wouldn't spend five percent. I wouldn't spend two percent of my income. It's just I haven't. There's nothing extra I need, you know. It's just, just, it's there. It, that's on myself. It's there, and I share it, and I give it away, and I do all sorts of amazing things with it that make me happy. Uh, but I only would need maybe one, one percent, maybe. 
It's really interesting. And I remember having, having that uh, really amazing realization. It was about uh, six years ago. And uh, I saw, I write about this in my book, actually. So some of you know this story, but I saw these, these old gentlemen and they had so much more freedom than me. And here I was with, I had uh, two gyms or three gyms, two hair salons. I had an education company, a digital marketing company. Oh, I think I'm sure I had something else going on. too. speaking, but I had all these things going on. We were making millions of dollars, but I had absolutely no freedom. And then there were these two guys I saw. And I remember just sitting there so stressed out. I had all this stuff going on and they were just fishing. And they looked like they had like, I don't know. Ten dollars to their name or something, but I'm just being judgmental. They just, they just, did, they just didn't look abundant, but they were having a great time. It was a Tuesday morning, and I remember just going, "They actually, they have more freedom than me." And that's when I started telling uh, Scott to my wife, I was like, "You know what? You know, I think people can get free on a very, very little amount of money. Yet we just create these lives that need all of this extra stuff that uh, really stops us having that freedom that we want." And I just said to said to everyone, I said, you know what? I could probably just be free of like 5,000 bucks a month. Like I was like, that's all I need. And that could cover a decent rent and a da, 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 da. And I would, I would be free. And I remember realizing, because I had this other idea that to be free, you had to have millions. And as soon as I realized how small it was, I was like, I let everything go. I, mean, I got rid of it all and just went, wow, I can have it now. Because for me, it was about freedom. You see. And so my question is for you. The most important thing is to really understand what is it that you want from money? You know, some of you want freedom. Some of you want abundance. Some of you want super fancy cars and toys and houses. And some of you want to give to charity. Some of you want to look after family. I don't know what it is you want. You're allowed to have it any way. So here's my question for you. What do you want from or in regards to money? What do you want from it? Please type it in or write it down. Give me a number one when you've, when you've really done it. What do you really want from it? What do you want from or in regards to money? You know, just as is, what is it that you want? For me, freedom. For me, choices. For me, running a great business. Yeah. Hmm. And just get really clear. What do you want from it? There's no right way to answer it. It's just, what do you want from it? I want lots of nice stuff, Chris. Great. I want shiny diamonds and um, branded, uh, you know, branded this, or I want 10 cars. Well, I don't care. Whatever you want, you know, life's for you. Well, I want charities. I want this. I want to travel. I don't know. What do you want? What do you want from it? Hmm. When you have what you want, when you have what you want, what will having that do for you? Give me a number two or the answer when you've got it. When you have what you want, what will having that do for you? I remember thinking, well, what? What will having that do for me? Well, I remember going, well, I would just be able to coach. I'd be able to give away uh, my time. I'd be able to, to walk on the beach. Well, I'd just have, I'd have, have it. Yeah, what would, when you have what you want, what would having that actually do for you? Hmm. And if you've removed stress or if you have a feeling of ease, what would having that do for you? What would having the freedom 
do for you? What would having that abundance do for you? What would having that nice car and, you know, that amazing watch or that house or that boat, what would having that actually do for you? What will it allow you to be, have, do, share, experience? Interesting, just to get really clear. Okay, number three, how will you know when you have what you want? How will you know? What is the specific markers or real world events that will let you know you have gotten what you want? What are specific markers? What's a specific point in time that will let you know you have gotten what you want. You know, really include real world conditions, uh, moments or manifestations, as well as internal feelings. And give, give me a number three, you know, how will you know? Maybe there's something you'll be saying to yourself so that you can experience it. You know it. Hmm. Fantastic. So where, when, and with who would you want this? Where, when, and with whom do you want this? Like, so where, where's this going to happen? When's this going to happen? And who are the people you're going to do this with? Because to be honest, you probably don't just want to do it with you on an island by yourself with nobody there. So where, when, and with whom do you want to do it? Who do you want to do this with? Who do you want to do this abundance, this freedom with who? Hmm. When? When when do you want to do this? You can do it whenever you want. When do you want to do it? You're allowed to do it now. You can do it in a few months. Whatever's, whatever's true. So, so now let's let's get into some nitty-gritty with this. This is the fifth question. How will all of this affect important people in your life, both positively and negatively? How will this affect important people in your life, both positively and negatively? So think about the positive and the negative. Not everyone's going to be happy about this. Some people will definitely be, uh, they will feel less than, they will feel challenged, they will judge it, they'll feel like you've changed, they'll feel like loss of connection. It was all sorts of stuff. So how will this affect important people in your life? Not everyone will be happy. Everyone say, everyone's going to be happy. No, they won't. No, they won't. <laughs> Someone said, it's not my problem. Ah, oh, it's it, to your unconscious, it is. Answer the question, friends. <laughs> it does matter. <laughs> People say, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Just answer the question. It's not that scary. Watch your unconscious, try to avoid it. Doesn't matter. They're all going to love it. It's okay. It's all going to be fine. Just, just acknowledge the question. It doesn't, it doesn't change the truth if you acknowledge it. So how will this affect important people in your life, both positively and negatively? You know, how could it, how could it change their experiences? So we live a little bit of a lie that if we were to do this, everyone's so happy that they don't have to work anymore. Everyone's so happy that they get to travel the world. Everyone will be thrilled, you know. <laughs> A lot of times we would lose connection with those who haven't found abundance because we no longer have the challenges and problems that they have and they don't want you just to hand them money. I've got a really a business mentor of mine and he's having real big challenges with his, uh, his wife's uh, family because they've got hundreds of millions of dollars 
and the other family members are, 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 are in jobs and the, the mother needs some, um, some medical care. And so they're just wanting to pay for it. And everyone else feels less than because they can't pay their fair share. And, uh, and it's causing all sorts of challenges because they're saying, well, you always just come in and pay for all this. And, you know, we want to help out too. I think that's it's a really hard thing to deal with. Interesting. So is there any other relevant information about, you know, this end result that uh, that's really, really interesting? You want to consider all ramifications of having it just the way you want, just how you choose it. And, and, you know, I'm not guiding you to make something up that's not there. I'm just asking questions. And, uh, and that's really important. So if we come back to the now, let's really dig into this. And I don't expect anyone to type these answers in, to be honest. So is that okay? I'm, so I'll say it again. I'm not expecting you to type these answers in. Um, I'm not going to read any out. But I want you to consider uh, this, please. And, and please, you don't need to, to write this in. Uh, you know, what are the real world, real world details? And, and Mel's don't put these questions in. I just want you guys to consider these. What are the real world details of your financial life? Like, what's the reality? You know, levels of debt, savings, lifestyle, stress, like just, you know, what, what are those? You know, just, just consider what are the real world details? Like, if I'm just honest about it, you know. Um, what are you currently experiencing around money? Now, when you really just, what am I? Yeah. Mm. Someone's posted, I'm not so keen on having to give the government a big slice of having it. Just create a really big slice for yourself. It's my answer. What, what do you tell yourself about money? What do you tell yourself about it? Like, what's it going to do for you? What's, what's, it, what's it there for? What do you tell yourself? If I could just have this or do this or save that. What do you tell yourself? Hmm. When you ask, well, why are there so many rules or why do I have to pay this? What are you really saying? You know, why is it so unfair? You know. Mm. Yeah. So when you think about what you what are you currently experiencing around money and the emotional estates, what are the emotional states you experience around money and your financial situation? What do you tell yourself about money? This is a very important question, this next one. Someone's typed in, I tell myself I am a money magnet. And is that, is that true? Does that work out? Because sometimes we try to tell ourselves something because we believe the opposite. So we're trying to um, convince ourselves. Maybe not. What are the physical sensations that go with these emotional states? Okay, when you really tune into that, what are the physical sensations that go with these? And where do you feel them in your body? Do you feel them in your head, your chest, stomach, neck, shoulders, jaw? Where, where, where do you feel it? Interesting. So, so that's there. Yeah. So we're going to do recode. My question for you is what do you really need to revise to allow more money to flow? You know, we get in that end result of what you really want. Yeah. I'll let that, that sit there. So should we have some fun with Recode? Is that some good awareness? There's no good reason. There's no good reason why you don't have the choice, abundance, freedom, authority, money. 
that you choose. The only good reason is that you have, uh, there's, no un there's no good reason why you can't create it. There's many good reasons why you haven't. And that's because your unconscious is doing a brilliant job. So I want to say thank you to all of the unconscious part-time personalities, uh, uh, belief structures and emotions that have done such a diligent job at keeping your current reality in such rapport with your family structure so that you can feel safe, that you can feel like you belong. And we want to thank all of them and we want to choose to create the money and success in our life and feel a deep sense of connection and belonging with our tribe and our family. How does that sound? I choose to have this level of financial wealth and abundance and I also choose to have that because if you can find other ways to create the choice of having that belonging, feeling safety with your family that has nothing to do with money and you can have it all now, it's such, it's such an eye opener. It's, uh, it's like, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. And, and just on that, one of the things that a lot of us pretend is we're going to make money to then go save our family and give it all to them. And, uh, It, that's that's really it's a really interesting structure it's like we're not allowed to just have it we have to go and give it and unfortunately what we're saying with that message is they're not allowed to have life the way they want it you see does that make sense it's like you're not allowed to have that that's you're basically judging the way that they've chosen it to be and saying you've got no will to have it your own way so i'm going to give you all this because i'm I'm, I'm the savior of you, but we do it in a good intention, but it always comes across as well, I could have figured this out myself. You know, just imagine someone else just turning up and giving you all this cash and you're like, wait, what? No, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm all good. I'm figuring it out myself. You don't want it. You see? And, uh, and it's an interesting uh, savior victim pattern in order for you to save someone. There has to be someone that needs saving. And we can nearly hold people in our conscious thought that they need saving. I'm going to save them. I'm going to save them. And therefore, that court is being seen as a victim that needs saving. Something to muse on, I think. Hey, Chris here again. I hope you really enjoyed that session. Obviously, it was streamed live to our Magnet Mind Masterclass uh, coaching program. If you'd like to be involved in that program, please do reach out. Uh, we do have spaces you can uh, apply for and you can join. So do let us know if it's something for you. And again, thank you so much for your support. Subscribe, like, and share this content so we can reach millions of people just like you and help them become conscious creators. Have a great day. Stay super conscious.